The ancient world knew them as wild, as severe as the winter which chills their hearts and freezes water and wine. They are rebellious to intoxication. Theirs are the biggest horses. Their royal steeds are whiter than the snow and as fleet of foot as the wind. Their weapons are made of gold, like the decorations on the chariots of their kings, but too huge for mortal men to carry, and they suit rather to the immortal gods. The Thracians, the horse breeders. According to some sources, the wisest of the Thracians are the Geta, but the most organized among the Thracian tribes are the Odrysians. After the end of the Greco-Persian Wars, Teres was the first Odrysian king and founder of the Odrysian royal dynasty. He consolidated his power around the middle of the 5th century BC throughout the extensive territory of the Balkan Peninsula. And this mighty kingdom, as Theusaidid is called it, who boasted Thracian lineage as well, continued to strengthen during the reign of his successor, Setalcus. The Valley of the Thracian Rulers, modern Bulgaria. For more than 2,500 years, the remains of the Odrysian rulers have been preserved in these tombs and mounds. Barbarians who loved to receive gifts instead of giving. Unrivaled drinkers. Crafty warriors who knew how to cross a frozen river by unleashing a fox onto the ice. Addicted to the shedding of blood. Eudaimonus. Thalassocrati. Whatever the Athenians taught them, they were favored allies. Some they united their families with, others they slightly eliminated to death like Cotis the first. Philip II of Macedon exploited the conflicts between the successors of Cotis, Kersobleptes, Amatokas, and Berisadis. He subjugated the Thracian Hersonis to gain control over Pangus and the Thracian gold. Kersobleptes, the Odrysian king, died in the conflict with Philip. Both Bulgaria and Turkey dispute his immortal resting place. The secret of his demise, possibly cruel, is drowned in the river of time. This water is neither cruel nor as fierce or fickle as the temper of the Odrysian king, Cotis I. It drowns Sotopolis, the city of his descendant, Southus III. By founding this city, Southus III had wanted to consolidate his own place as a righteous ruler facing Lysimachus, one of Alexander the Great's Diadochi. This is the alleged tomb of Southus III, and uh, this impressive structure is perhaps his final resting place. But in most cases, we can't be sure to whom these uh, impressive structures belong to. The ice-cold relations between the separate Thracian dynasts did not crack even generations later, when the Romans began chopping off hands in Thrace with the same enthusiasm as minting coins. More than 2,500 years after the death of the Thracian rulers and aristocrats, they once again mounted their horses, coming out from the kingdom of Zalmoxis. Archaeologist Dr. Ivailo Lozanov and archaeogeneticist Professor Johannes Krause team up with their colleagues in the labyrinth of time to reconstruct for the first time in history the Thracian royal dynasties. They will solve puzzling dynastic, religious, and personal secrets. This will be the first time that we really get an, an idea what is the genetic makeup 
of the people yeah. that lived in this part of Europe during that time. If we get the genetic profiles of those people, we could link them to other dynasties, see how the Otracians are related to other dynasties from the Tracians during that time, and potentially we could also see how those people are related to other populations of that time period, Romans for example, the Iron Age population from other parts of the Mediterranean, other parts of Europe, how they're related to previous people or later people, how they're related to modern people that live in the region. Based on archaeogenetics and skeletal remains of burials in rich graves, monumental tombs, and the necropolises of the Geta and the Odrician dynasty, this is the Rebirth of the Kings. The body and the soul do not die in the same way, nor to their secrets. And this will be the first time that we really get an, an idea what is the genetic makeup of the people yeah. that lived in this part of Europe during that time. We were able to isolate the Tracian genome. Um, we believe that. It, it should be possible to get yeah. the Tracian genome, what that yeah. means, if mm -hmm. there is a character to this genome, if there's a type of genome yeah. that Tracians have that is different mm -hmm. to people that lived before or after. Yeah. This is exactly what yeah, we and want to find out. Potential outcome of the project. Exactly. Yeah. Coming in 2018.